Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome back to my Saturday Hodgepodge, my weekly wrap up of reading, booktube things, other things going on. Uh, I want to start off by thanking everybody who expressed uh, their concern and well wishes for me and my family during the uh, big Texas freeze, which is for the most part over. I can report happily that my daughter and son-in-law uh, have power and water now in their home in the Austin area and that I woke up this morning to find out uh, that my mom and dad, who had lost power on Thursday night, uh, had power and water restored to a certain extent uh, this morning, so that's all good news. Uh, if you've been keeping up uh, with my post and some videos, and maybe I haven't said it, we, we never lost power. My house, my home, my neighborhood never lost power. We were incredibly lucky uh, in that regard that we weren't among those uh, who had to deal with the extreme cold weather. We did have a pipe burst above our garage, uh, a pipe which runs to an outside spigot was, uh, well, it, it essentially ran over an, un, un, an uninsulated garage, and even though I had been dripping water uh, in the area of that, uh, apparently uh, that pipe burst, uh, I have a feeling it had to do with something about the way in which it was installed. Anyway, uh, that set off an adventure for my wife and I on Tuesday uh, of this week. We went around looking for materials to essentially uh, cap that line since it didn't go anywhere else. I thought if we could cap that line, then we could just, you know, turn the water back on and we could go back to our lives as normal. It took us about three and a half hours uh, to find anything that would fit over the end of that line that I could even kind of cobble together to cap it. I got that installed and when we went to turn the water back on to check to see if it was going to hold, uh, the water pressure, when we tried to turn the water back on, the valve uh, that allows water uh, into, our, uh, into our home, that valve broke or malfunctioned uh, and it was stuck just barely open. So we have had, uh, we already had minimal water pressure uh, thanks to that and then uh, the city I live in reduced water pressure and we're still, still in a boil water uh, circumstance because of low water availability uh, and that has meant that we have water only at a trickle which has affected uh, our ability to you know do things like shower or our laundry but other than that uh, we can get some water into the house uh, and I've been able to keep you know our most uh, <laughs> our, we are able to, to fulfill our most necessary uh, functions uh, with plumbing uh, with no real problem just a little uh, extra inconvenience uh, funny story you know uh, we, uh, Tuesday, we assumed uh, here where I live that, you know, we had kind of survived the worst of it. I was walking into this room from the rest of the house, heard the sound of water running. I thought, well, surely we're not doing uh, laundry because we were trying to do our part to conserve power. I realized quickly that it was water in the uh, garage, rushed out there to see water literally just raining down on our cars in the garage. We got our cars out of the garage. Um, I got the water turned off. Uh, and then in this process of trying to fix it, I went up in the attic uh, to, you know, try to piece the, the, the cap part together. And I uh, made the mistake of leaning ever so slightly uh, out onto a piece of the drywall, which makes up the ceiling, which has been weakened by water. And that collapsed. And uh, I kind of fell a little bit through with it. I was able to catch myself and pull myself back up so I didn't land in the, on the garage floor and everything in there. Uh, but... Now on top of the water damage, which would have had to be replaced anyway, we have a hole in the roof of our garage, and anyway, <laughs> you know, but nothing like a lot of people have had to deal with, so uh, we are uh, definitely counting ourselves lucky. I had a pretty busy week in terms of reading, and one of those weeks, unlike last week, where I felt like I accomplished something uh, because I actually finished uh, a book. I did finish one of my BookTube prize reading books, or two of them actually. Uh, the, the physical copy one I finished is Black Spartacus, uh, The Epic Life of Toussaint Louverture by Sudhir Hazari Singh. Uh, I finished that book. That was a good uh, book to finish. I also finished uh, We Keep the Dead Close uh, by Becky Cooper, uh, which I read as an ebook. so hopefully there's a picture of it up right there. Uh, I did start um, the next book, which is uh, this is how everything ends. What's it called? Wait, I got it right here. This is called The End of Everything. 
Astrophysically Speaking by Katie Mack. I started that. That's also an ebook. I'm continuing my buddy read of Cast, uh, The Origins of Our Discontent by Isabel Wilkerson uh, with Noel, the book rook. This is going really well. I'm uh, still really enjoying this read. Uh, let's see. I also am still doing my buddy read of the short stories you do are wealthy. As a matter of fact, I need to get to this next story today. And I did barely start by reading the introduction of We Want Freedom, uh, uh, Life in the Black Panther Party by Mumi Abu-Jamal. Uh, so I've been busy doing my reading, trying to get lots of things kind of uh, fitted in, in here uh, <laughs> in this last week or so or last week plus uh, February uh, to try to you know meet all my reading goals. I really am determined to get all my book two prize reading books done before March so I can devote all of my March March of the Mammoth reading time uh, to reading Red Comet, the biography of uh, Sylvia Plath, which is the big book in my uh, book two prize nonfiction reading group. Uh, so I did want to do that. Um, this week I saw a video over at Kay the Reader's uh, channel in which she kind of issued a challenge to me and, and to everybody else and to lots of other booktubers she mentioned specifically, which I'm going to call Kay's Rereading Challenge. And she just thought, you know challenged us to, to think of some books that were worthwhile and that we needed to, uh, that maybe we think about rereading uh, or books that maybe we didn't mention a lot. And that was difficult for me because... A, I'm not much of a rereader, uh, and B, if I do reread, that means I'm reading a book I've already read, and since so much of my uh, reading uh, focus for most of my life uh, was on a certain type of re writer, um, then the books all kind of reflect that. But I did pick out some titles uh, which I want to uh, reread. Um, two of them uh, I want to reread uh, because... Uh, for a long time, I would have listed uh, these authors as, and and still do, but I thought of these authors as some of the most important authors in terms of my reading life and authors got me into reading. And so one of the things I, I started doing last year before the pandemic and all the uh, police uh, killings that went on last year, which kind of disrupted my uh, th thinking process and kind of uh, put me in a reading slump. I was rereading uh, to evaluate uh, the uh, Border Trilogy by Cormac McCarthy, and I got through uh, All the Pretty Horses and The Crossing uh, as kind of a reevaluation reread, but I did not pick up and reread Cities of the Plain, so I would like to do that so I can finish off uh, that project. Uh, uh, these are probably, I think, Outside the Road, All the Pretty Horses are probably the most popular of McCarthy's books, and All the Pretty Horses and The Crossing and Cities of the Plain are related by having, I think, two characters uh, in common who will, or, or this book will have two characters from those books come together. Also, you know, Ernest Hemingway is probably is the writer I've mentioned many times who really uh, got me into uh, reading, got me back into reading uh, when I was in college. Uh, and I've oftentimes said that For Whom the Bell Tolls, I think, is his best novel uh, as a novel. Uh, and so I wanted to reread that and see if I still uh, felt that way about it. Also, I want to reread um, at some point uh, The Antiquarian uh, by Gustavo Favron Petreu. Um, this is a book that uh, I shared with Mark Nash. Uh, it's kind of one of those, I think it was a 112-page challenge where I sent him uh, the text of page 112 of this book, and uh, and uh, he checked it out and read it. And, and it is a it is a really uh, kind of a psychological thriller book, and it's got twists and turns, and it's 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 a book that really deserves to be read, and for me reread to get even a greater understanding and maybe a greater appreciation. Uh, this month I was going to read, and I hopefully <laughs> might still get to read uh, Michael Ondaatje's uh, The Skin of a Lion. The Skin of the Lion, which is a part of my year-long project to read one book that's been on my shelf for a really long period of time every month. I chose Ondaatje's uh, novel for that purpose, and somebody told me that it was related to uh, kind of almost like a prequel, I believe, uh, to The English Patient. Uh, the English Patient was a novel I read a long time ago. I really liked it. Uh, a lot of people have seen uh, the movie uh, adaptation. If you're like Elaine from Seinfeld, you really didn't like it. And so I want to reread The English Patient to kind of remind myself of why I like the book. Because, and I don't know if this happens to you or not, but it happens to me, once I see a movie adaptation of a book, in some ways the movie then replaces my memory of the book. Uh, and I want to see and go back and reevaluate if I still think the book was as good, and then a book I know that I, I'm going to reread 
uh, by uh, an author that I, I, I gush about all the time, and that's W.G. Sebald. Uh, I want to reread Austerlitz, which is considered to be, you know, I guess his best book or the book he's best known for. I read this book a long time ago. I definitely want to reread it because I have been reading uh, W.G. Sebald uh, in the last couple of years. And I want to finish off uh, his last of his four, I think, major novels uh, this year as well. So for me, a lot of the reread that is a part of Kay's rereading challenge is rereading books to evaluate them to see kind of how I feel about them uh, still today. I wanted to take some time in this video, since so many people have been very nice to me, to do uh, some shout outs. So I want to shout out what will eventually be three channels and then a fourth channel and a specific video for the fourth for the fourth channel. The first channel I want to shout out is Marilyn Maya Mendoza. She is a Hawaiian booktuber. She is uh, full of life and interesting. And my goodness, what a fascinating life! I have a feeling she's led. Uh, I enjoy hearing her talk about books. I enjoy hearing her dance and sing. She does a great Mae West impersonation. If you haven't checked out Marilyn's channel, please go over and check it out. Link will be below. Be below. Also, uh, a Finnish uh, a booktuber from Finland whose first name I just forgot because that's what I'm like and I don't write things down. This channel name is called Drawn to Stories. I really like his Wednesday reflection videos where he just reflects on uh, the reading of the week and the books he's read and, and some other things kind of you know, uh, his Wednesday, uh, his Wednesday check-in video, which I, I like a lot. And then a new channel, uh, is called beating about the books. Uh, uh, and the, the, the lady who hosts that is named Zena. Um, and it's just really good. She's very quiet, reserved, thoughtful, deep thinking analysis of books. So please go check that out. And then a channel, which is somewhat new to me, but, uh, I did one of the tags, somebody tagged me to do one of the tags he created, and that channel is called Guilty Feet, uh, and he did a shout-out video. So I'm shouting out Guilty Feet's, uh, I think it was his spoiler tag, but at the end he did some shout-outs and book recommendations, and so I'm shouting that out because he shouted out, I think, uh, five, uh, to me, uh, young, young booktubers, youngish booktubers, uh, and I went and checked out their channels, and they're just... They're just amazing uh, channel. So go, I'll put a link to his video down below. Go watch his video for the, spo for the spoiler tag, but also go watch his video and look in the show notes, the recommendations, and please go follow those channels. I believe they all, at the time I went to subscribe, I believe they all had under 100 uh, subscribers. So please go check those out. Lots of good uh, new channels out there. And as an old person, I can older, sorry, as an older person, not old. Uh, people yell at me when I say that I'm old. As an older uh, person here on BookTube, I am constantly amazed and uh, really kind of um, made optimistic by some of the amazing young people who are out there who are making uh, BookTube videos about the kinds of books that here in this corner of, the book, of BookTube we, we pay attention to and the kind of content uh, that we create. And it, may, it just really enriches our community. So please go look at all these uh, channels and, uh, and, and, and enjoy because I think they all have uh, some great things to contribute. Anyway, there you go. There's my Saturday hodgepodge for this week. Hope you're all well. Look forward to your comments in the comment section below. Thank you again to everyone who expressed their well wishes. Um, and thank you for watching.